Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at game 1 of the 2016 Osho title match between Goda Masataka, the defending Osho, and Kubo Toshiaki, the challenger. In this game, Goda reveals a new move in an old Joseki, which leads to an intense, chaotic fight in the middle and end game. As a result, the game becomes the shortest and most exciting game of the entire match. So let's get started. Goda is Sente and chooses Pawn 2 6, his preferred static rook opening. And in response, Kubo chooses Central Rook. Now, in his next two moves, Goda has the option to activate his rook with Pawn 2 4. This would have entered a very sharp Joseki that was hotly researched for several years, but at the time, it was already decided that Central Rook is okay in these lines. Therefore, Goda chooses a more quiet Joseki with Silver 4 8 and King 6 8. And Kubo, after taking the Vanguard Pawn and closing the Bishop's Diagonal, now defends the second file with Bishop to 3 3. And this move by Kubo seems normal, but it's not really played anymore. The modern Joseki is Silver 4 2. Both sides develop their silvers, and the meaning behind this Joseki is that Central Rook is using the right silver to cover the Bishop's head. Although 5 4 is the ideal position for this silver, Static Rook Silver is also placed awkwardly in front of his own pawn. Consequently, Static Rook might attack by jumping the knight and offering a silver exchange. Well anyways, let's get back to the game. So after Kubo plays King to 6 2, the opening continues. And we see that Kubo has used the same silver in a different way. He protects the bishop, enabling this sharp engagement. The game continues with a few exchanges. And here, Golda plays Bishop Drop 6 5, a move that surprises many observers. This move is the start of a Joseki that was first played by Fukara in 2011. It was used in a total of 8 games, all from 2011. You see, this move hadn't been played in 6 years. Why? I guess Central Rook never fully refuted this move. Rather, it was thought that Static Rook hadn't found enough measures to get a good position. When Golda plays this move in a title match, it might mean that he found a new move that could change the evaluation of the entire Joseki. So Kubo pulls his rook back and Goda jumps the knight, threatening a fork. And here Kubo might have liked to defend the fork with pawn to 4 4, but the knight is hanging and this is a disaster. Therefore, Kubo has to pull the silver back with silver to 4 2, and Goda activates his rook. Well, Kubo can't do anything about this yet, so he counterattacks with pawn to 6 4, going after Goda's bishop's head, which seems pretty effective because the bishop doesn't have any squares. Goda can only save the bishop by dropping a pawn. And here finally, Kubo defends the second file. So thanks to his counterattack against Goda's bishop, Kubo could pull back his rook in defense. I feel that this is one example of how professional often combine attacking and offensive ideas together. Their moves create a flow that can be felt throughout the game. So, Goda captures the pawn and pulls his rook back. Here Kubo plays an important move, king to 8-2. On the surface, it might look like Kubo moves his king to threaten rook takes 5-4, which wasn't possible because the bishop could pin the rook. However, the deeper meaning follows a fundamental shogi principle. Looking at the board, the fight is happening over here. Kubo moves his king away from the fight to increase his king's safety. This move can even be described as an early escape. It might seem like a minor detail, but as the game continues, we will see how its value increases with almost every move. Anyways, here Goda finally plays his new move, pawn drop 2 2. This is a pretty deep move, but one of the ideas is that after gold takes, knight jump was played in the game, Kubo's gold has been mirrored to the side. And as a result, Goda is threatening knight takes, followed by a silver drop on 4-2. Actually, in this position, Kubo seals his next move, and it was thought that he would seal either silver to 4-4 or rook takes 5-4. The next day, it was revealed that Kubo had sealed silver to 4-4, and the game resumes. Here, Goda completely ignores the silver attacking his rook, and plays pawn to 5 through promotes. Yeah, Kubo didn't have much of a choice. If silver takes, then knight takes, rook takes, rook promotes. This is a fork, so it's a disaster for Kubo. So Kubo had to take the rook, and here is an amazing move. On drop 5-5. Five five. 
attacking the bishop, which has no squares. But what about silver takes 5 5? Well, rook draw 5 7. There's no way to save the bishop. So, actually, the bishop is trapped. But Golda ignores it again and plays silver draw 4 2, trapping Kugel's rook. So, pawn takes. And considering the material balance, Golda is now down a full bishop. His only option is to continue attacking. So he plays rook drop, and a rook drop, and takes, and another rook drop. It was feared now that the game might continue. Rook drop, takes, and another rook drop, leading to Senichte, a draw by repetition. However, in the post-game interview, Golda said if Kubo had played the rook drop, then he would have played rook takes, 6-4 promotes. By taking this pawn, Golda would have given Kubo the Aji of dropping a pawn on the 6th file, but Golda's dragon is dominant and in contrast, Kubo's rook might become a target during Golda's attack. Although I feel Golda's position is easier to play, it might still be a pretty even fight. Anyways, back to the game. So Kubo decided against dropping the rook and instead played bishop drop 4-4, a pretty exciting move. Kubo ignores the rook attacking his gold and is counterattacking the lance. So rook takes, bishop takes. And this sequence has completely changed the nature of the game, because we've now reached the endgame. The fight in the endgame is all about speed, not material. This position is pretty close, and the outcome can be decided by the gain or loss of a single move. Right now, it's Gota's initiative, and he brings the dragon closer with a check. Here, Gota could continue attacking with Tolkien in 6-2. However, Kubo can counterattack strongly with a rook drop and a bishop drop. So if the rook is taken, silver drop 7-7 seven, seven will be checkmate. The only defense is pawn drop, but then takes, and losing that Tolkien is pretty big for Goda. Kubo can continue attacking naturally with a move like silver drop 9-9, nine, nine. so yeah, Kubo is pretty good here. So instead, Goda defended with silver 8-8, eight, eight. and after a rook drop and a bishop drop, this position is the critical moment of the game. There are possibilities for both attack and defense, but Golda has to make a choice, so let's carefully consider his options one by one. The first option is a direct attack with Tolkien to 6 2. Here, Kubo might attack with a silver drop, but knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, and king runs. And if rook takes, then the king runs to 5 6. And the king is actually pretty safe on this square. Because Kubo doesn't have a way to get to Goda's king, Goda is winning in this variation. But instead of dropping the silver on 7 7, Kubo has another attack. He can play silver drop 6 8. This move is possible because Kubo's king is not in threat mate, and it's a threat mate on Goda's king starting with silver takes gold. Goda's only option is to take. And after these exchanges, Kubo's king is now in threat mate. Because Gota has gained two bishops and a silver in hand, he now has a threat mate by taking on 7 2 and dropping a bishop or a silver on 7 1. But Kubo can take the gold and give a check. And if the king tries to run, then it's a checkmate. Gold drop and gold draw. So Gota has to drop something on 7 8 to block the check but this removes a threat mate on Kubo's king. So for example, after silver drop, Kubo can continue attacking naturally with a silver drop and taking the silver. And we see that Kubo's king isn't in a mate. For example, Tolkien takes, bishop drop, bishop drop. Goda is missing one silver to checkmate Kubo's king, the silver that was dropped on 7-8. So yeah, Goda's at attack is not enough in this variation. Back to the critical position now. If attacking with Tolkien to 6 2 is not an option, what can Goda play? In the game, he chooses gold to 5 8, but this might have been a mistake. During the post game interview, Goda brought up an amazing possibility it's pawn to 8 6. What? Well, there are two meanings in this move to draw the bishop closer and to create an escape route for the king. After bishop takes, now Tolkien to 6 2. And thanks to the escape route, Silver Drop 6-8 is no longer a threat mate. 
but Koopa's attack is far from over. How about a Rook Sacrifice and a Triple Threat Mate? Horse takes 8-8, Horse takes 8-9, and Silver Drop 8-7. There's not much that Gota can do. He can take the Silver, and finally his King is completely surrounded. So it's winning for Kubo, right? Well, not so fast. Gota has gained a Rook and a Silver in hand. Is it enough to checkmate Kubo's King? The answer to this question is a matter of life and death. Talking takes, silver draw, rook draw. Well, the general's draw is a simple mate. And because Kubo doesn't have any other pieces in hand, his king must run. Dragon sack, rook promotes. And finally, no matter what is dropped in 6-2, it'll be a checkmate. And so it seems like if Gota chose this option, he might have had some chances. So in the actual game, Gota plays gold to 5-8, and Kubo attacks with a pawn sacrifice. Well, it might seem like Kubo only succeeded in drawing Gota's silver towards his castle and towards his king, but we'll soon see the meaning of Kubo's attack. A silver sack and a bishop sack, and then a knight draw. The king has several options here, but after king to 6-6, then rook takes, horse takes. And here we see that Gota's silver is no longer defending the 5-5 five, five square, so gold drop is a checkmate. So Gota can run to 6-6, six, six, but how about 8-6? Well this variation is pretty cool. Horse takes, rook takes, promotes. And here Kubo is making two threat mates starting with Dragon the 7-7 seven, seven, or Silver Drop 7-7. Seven, seven. So Gota's king seems to be in pretty big trouble. But Gota has a really cool move here. Bishop drop 6-3. The bishop defends the gold drop on 7-4, opening an escape route for Gota's king and removing the threat mate. But this move also makes a threat mate on Kubo's king, starting with Bishop takes 7-2 promotes, followed by dropping bishop or silver on 7-1. Yeah, it's a threat mate removing threat mate. But actually it's not over yet. If you'd like, please pause the video and try to find Kubo's only winning move. Okay, so Kubo's only move here is king to 9-2. Honestly, I couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw this move. The meaning is that bishop takes 2-7 promotes is no longer a check, and as soon as the bishop abandons this diagonal, the king will be checkmated. Even though Gota has a bishop and a silver in hand, there's no way to get to Kubo's king. Therefore, thanks to this amazing defense, Kubo can make a threat mate on the next move and win the game. So in the game, Gota runs to 6-8, but Kubo's attack is unstoppable. Horse takes, and rook takes. And a pawn drop breaking the shape of Gota's defense. After silver takes, silver draw, silver takes, it's clear that Kubo's attack is faster. Gota tries to run. Well, does Kubo take the gold here? No, he surrounds the king with pawn draw. It's 3-6. And after Gota takes the knight, Kubo takes the gold. Here Gota gave up. So, after a tremendous fight in the middle game and end game, Challenger Kubo struck the first blow against the reigning Osho to take a 1-0 lead in the best of 7 match. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Next week, we'll look at game 2 to see if Gota will even the score or if Kubo will extend his lead. Thank you for watching and for your kind support. See you next time.